Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube video preparing you for the upgrade to version 20. Over the past few months, we've been busy here at 3CX getting ready for our new version of 3CX to bring us into the future. We're going to show you what is required to upgrade to 3CX version 20. In this video, we are going to go through what is required as a prerequisite before you upgrade to version 20. We're going to show you the procedure on how to upgrade to version 20 as well. We're going to focus a bit on the departments, how they are set up and their office hours. We're going to have a look and see some of the features that are available in version 20 as well. And before we finish, we're just going to go over what is coming in the future here at 3CX. Let's get started with the upgrade prerequisites. We very recently released a blog post on our website with a simple checklist of what you need to make sure you have done onto your version 18 PBX before moving on to version 20. Uh, the first thing on that list is you will need to be on version 18 update nine. We very recently released an update with version 18. It is the final update for version 18. And that does all the preparatory work in the background to make sure that your upgrade to version 20 is seamless and smooth. You will need to have a system owner. We'll talk about the hardware specifications as well. We'll talk about the networking aspect as well with split DNS if you are using the 3CX apps. And we'll talk about the departments and their setup. First things first, version 18 update nine, a very recent update at 3CX that is preparing you for the upgrade to version 20. It's not a very big update, very quickly done. Uh, this is done through the management console of version 18. This is one of the last things that you will be doing in the management console of version 18. If you go to the updates page, you will see that it is out of date and a new update is available. Select it and click on download selected. You will be logged out. This will do the upgrade in the background. So please don't do this during the middle of the day because it will stop the services and it will drop all the calls. It is very important to note that only update nine systems can be upgraded from version 18 to version 20. If you are using a backup from update eight backwards and trying to reinstall using that backup, you will not succeed. It must be an update nine backup or go through the management console. Here we can see the management console of version 18. We can see that this PBX has already been updated to update nine, so it is ready to go. Let's move on to the next step. The system owner has been a requirement of 3CX since version 18 update six. If you haven't already done so, you will need to sign one of the users as a system owner. You can have multiple system owners if you want to as well. You're not just limited to one. This system owner or these system owners will need to have unique email addresses that cannot be used on any other users. You will need to take a note of who the system owner is. Make sure that you can log in to that system owner extension uh, on the web client through the admin console because you will need this in version 20. As you can see on the screen, this system does not have a system owner defined. So the system is actually blocking you from doing the upgrade. Coming back to our management console and going to the updates page, we can see that there is a version 20 available as an upgrade. This is a Linux machine, so it will do the operating system from Debian 10 to Debian 12 as well. Something that is very important before moving on to version 20 is that you do meet the hardware specification requirements. The hardware requirements of version 20 are a minimum of two CPU cores. You will need to have a minimum of two gigabytes of memory and a minimum of five gigabytes of hard drive. Please make sure that you do meet the hardware specifications before you commence the upgrade. If you don't meet the required specs, the upgrade will fail and will not proceed. 3.6 version 20 has been tested on supported cloud providers only. These are namely Amazon with AWS and LightSail, Google Cloud, the Microsoft Azure platform, DigitalOcean and Vulture. Something else that might cause the upgrade to fail is if you have modified the Linux repositories. Please refrain from doing so. Uh, we will only be able to do an upgrade of a vanilla 3CX ISO installation that doesn't have anything modified. Moving on to the networking aspect, split DNS. 
This is a requirement if you are using an on-premises installation and you are using the 3CX applications. If you have your PBX deployed in the cloud, either by hosted by 3CX, a third-party hosting provider, you do not need to do anything. This is only for the on-premises installations. Split DNS means that you are resolving the FQDN of the PBX externally to the external IP address of the firewalls interface, if you are outside the network. And when you are internally within the network, you will resolve to the private IP address of the server. You will require an internal DNS server for this. Or if you don't have the capabilities of procuring an internal DNS server or the infrastructure to do so, you can use a firewall that can do hairpin NAT. On smaller installations, it may be easier to migrate your 3CX to 3CX hosted or to an SMB offering of 3CX. Here we have a small network diagram to represent what split DNS does. We can see that we have a 3CX application connected from outside the network through a 5G network. We have our firewall that is protecting the network with an external IP address of 100.150.200.250. We have an external DNS server. This could be any DNS service, for example, Google DNS. And we have a DNS entry on this server that is pbx.3cx.com. And that resolves to the external IP address of the firewall that we mentioned earlier. Internally, we have our internal DNS server on our internal 192.168 network. We have added the DNS entry of pbx.36.com onto this DNS server as well. But rather than having the external IP address, we put the internal IP address of the network of the PBX, 192.168.0.20. The 36 application will do a DNS request. It will request the IP address of PBX dot 3cx.com. The DNS server will respond with the external IP address of the network 100, 150, 200, 250. And through the powers of the internet, that device now knows where to go. So we'll go through the internet, through to the firewall. The firewall will do the necessary port forwarding to come into the network and go directly into the PBX and connect. If this device or any other device that goes into the network now and connects, and it connects onto the Wi-Fi network, it will get its IP address internally through the DHCP server. It will also be given the IP address of the DNS server it needs to consult. So it will go through to the DNS server. It will do a request for the IP address of pbx.3cx.com. That will respond with the IP address of 192.168.0.20. On our network internally, the PBX has an IP address of 192.168.0.20. It will then go through the network. It will go through the access point to the PBX and connect. If you do not have an internal DNS server, it will be served its IP addresses by the external DNS server. So the device would go to the external DNS server in this case. It will do a DNS request for pbx.3cx.com. It will get the IP address of 100, 150, 200.250. And through the routing of the network, it will go through the network, it will go through to the firewall, and it will go to the external interface. The firewall will reroute that back into the network with hairpin NAT. The configuration of this is dependent on the firewall. Some firewalls do allow this, some do not. So please consult the manuals of your firewall device to see how to configure this. That will then come back into the network and go to the PBX and connect. I repeat, this is only a requirement if you are using the 3CX applications and your PBX is on the same network. If you are hosted by 3CX or using any other cloud location, you do not need to do this. Another prerequisite is the setting of the department hours. The department hours will replace the global hours in 3CX version 20. 
it is good to do the migration preparation before you start the upgrade. Uh, go and get your global office hours, go to your departments, define office hours. You will need to go into the admin console of version 18 through your web client to do this. The global office hours, if this is not configured beforehand, will be copied to each department. When you create a new department in version 20, the office hours will be set to always in. So the office hours will be on a 24 seven hour basis in the office. So let's go and start the upgrade procedure. How do we upgrade from version 18 to version 20? With version 20, we will be adopting a new operating system of Debian. In version 18, we were using Debian 10. We did get asked a lot of questions if we will ever adopt Debian 11. We opted to hold out for version 20 and go straight to Debian 12. But in order to do so, we will have to go through Debian 11 for a few minutes. Debian 12 allows us to utilize the latest security features and packages of the latest operating system. Uh, for example, the Reciprocate Engine and Engine X as the web server. The upgrade, even though it is just one click for you as the admin, is done in two steps. And this is transparent to you. The upgrade in the background will go from Debian 10 to Debian 11. As soon as this is completed, it will trigger another upgrade request immediately to go to Debian 12. This takes a bit of patience. It does take time. At the end of the day, we are upgrading an operating system twice. This can take anything usually from 10 to 20 minutes, for example, but there have been extreme cases that it may take up to an hour. So this does require a bit of patience in order for this to be allowed to complete. At this point, once you do this, once you trigger the upgrade, you will bid farewell to the management console. This is the last operation that you will be doing in the management console of version 18. It's had a good run. It's time to put it to sleep. Coming to our management console in version 18 and the updates page, we can see that an upgrade to version 20 is available. This will also do the operating system from Debian 10 to Debian 12 and also upgrade 3.6 from version 18 to version 20. Going to the admin console before I start the upgrade, I need to make sure that I do have a system owner. We can see that extension 100 uh, is defined as the system owner. And I am logged in with that user specifically. So I can access that. It is safe to go and do the upgrade. Going to the settings, going to language and office hours settings, I can see that global office hours are defined. I can see that I have a nine to five schedule from Monday to Friday with breaks from 12 to 12.30 each day as well. Going back to my admin console, I can see that I have two groups here. I have the office group and the sales group. In version 20, these will be called departments. I can go and set my office hours beforehand. My office hours for the office group are nine to five. So I'm going to go and define those from here. I can add a different schedule for each day, but I do have the add on the top that can go and define office hours for the entire week. And then I can just very easily just go and remove the weekend. I can go and add break times as well. and just remove the weekend. I can also define my routing here as well. I can select my sales queue, for example. When the office is closed, I can do the routing to a voicemail box. I will send that to the voicemail of the sales queue. I will leave the sales group blank. So we can see what happens if we don't migrate our office hours before the upgrade. We'll come back and see what the sales department has as office hours once we do the migration. Coming back to our management console, going back to the updates page, let's start the upgrade to version 20. Just click on the upgrade. 
you get the notification. You do see a few important points. Please make sure that you do read them carefully. I have already taken the backup of my system previously, so I can just go and click on upgrade now. That has now logged me out and we need to wait until the upgrade is complete. While that is upgrading, let's go and talk about a few other points that are important as well. Since we have deprecated the management console in version 20, we will need to use the web client's admin console in order to configure the PBX. This makes it a lot easier for the users. They basically just connect onto their web client. They no longer need to put the slash web client at the end, so it makes it a lot easier to remember the URL. They have the capability, if they are given the privileges, to configure the PBX directly from within their web client. The admin button is on the bottom left, and that makes it very easy, so you don't have to go and switch between different tabs in your browser. In version 20, we have reduced the reliance on the welcome email as well. When a user is created, they will receive the welcome email, but it doesn't contain static information. You will not see a username and password for the web client. You will not see the QR code. You will not see a configuration file for older apps. All they have is a link to go and create their own password. If a user at some point forgets their password and they click on forgot password, they will receive the welcome email again, and it will be a link to go and reset their password. Users can also utilize single sign-on by Microsoft or Google if you have configured this. Version 20 is not just a new interface. It is a rewriting of the entire system from the ground up. Since we are using a new SIP engine, we are able to give a lot more performance, to be more flexible, more agile, to give better and more direct control of the calls. A lot of the functionalities previously that were a bit sluggish are a lot more performant now. For example, we are able to immediately listen into calls. There is no delay. This will also allow us to handle larger installations where more users will be happy using 3CX. Let's move on to the setting up of the departments, something that is very important. The groups in version 18, in version 20, will be renamed to departments to actually reflect what they actually are. This will allow us to configure the office hours to be a lot more granular to be able to follow specific holidays for each department and also time zones. You may have a department that is in a different city, in a different state, different country, or a different continent. So they no longer need to guess where the PBX's global time zone is and to be able to configure their office hours based on that. You can say, for example, that your PBX's global time zone is in London and you have an office in New York. You can define the time zone of a particular department to be New York, and the users will just define their office hours as nine to five, not somewhere in the afternoon. A different department can also have different language settings. So you can localize for each of your colleagues if they are in a different country. One of the major changes that we have made to version 20 and the departments is the routing of the office hours. The office hours are set at the destination. We previously had office hours in the inbound rules for the DIDs and also for the SIP trunks, in addition to the global office hours. We no longer do that. The DIDs are assigned directly at the destination. And we can also define the office hours of the department. SIP trunks can also be used system-wide or they can be limited to a particular department. DIDs are also assigned directly at the destination. For example, a ring group, a queue, a digital receptionist, or a CFD. They can be assigned under a particular department and they will inherit the office hours of the department. So there's no need to go and do individual office hours for each SIP trunk. Users can also have different custom schedules as well. Let's go and have a look and see an example of the department office hours. We have our department office hours as nine to five. 
This will automatically become the default office hours for any system extension or user that we have added to this department. The system extension will be able to route the calls according to these times. And we have made improvements that we will see a bit further down about the system extensions. However, a user comes into the office a bit earlier. We have a user that comes in to open up the office at eight o'clock until four o'clock. So those are their office hours. The department office hours are ignored for this user and everything for their extension is routed based on this timing. To make things a bit easier for the system administrator, we can also define a department administrator as well. Trunks and system extensions should be added to their departments to inherit their times and to allow that department administrator to configure what they have to and not everything on the PBX. That could be digital receptionists, queues, and ring groups. Let's move on and have a look and see some of the other features of version 20. The ring groups, queues, and digital receptionists have migrated to a separate menu called call handling. So you won't see them directly in the left-hand side menu to streamline things a bit. The ring groups, queues, and digital receptionists can route calls based on the office hours, break times, and office hours. Previously, you would do this through the inbound rules timing or the SIP trunk, which would route the call to the system extension. But now you will be able to do that routing from within the system extension itself. The office hours for these extensions are inherited from the department office hours. And you can also process calls based on holidays. Previously in the ring groups and the queues, you would only have a destination if no answer. How to handle the call if it is not serviced by the system extension. But now, when the office is closed, you can now route the call to wherever you want to. For example, a voicemail box of a queue or a ring group, a user, and so on. You can also route the calls based on breaks. Previously, that could not be possible with the timing of an inbound rule or a SIP trunk. And you can also process the call differently on a holiday as well. You can see the example that we have terminated the call when it's a holiday, but we play an announcement beforehand. Another functionality we have added to the queues is the ability to target busy users. In a queue, when you are servicing a customer, you are focused on that customer. You will not be notified for another incoming queue call. You can still see it in the web client panel, where you can see the active calls and see how many callers are waiting. But previously with the queues, if you are on a different type of call, for example, making a direct external call to order a pizza, for example, calling one of your colleagues, checking your voicemail, the queue would consider this user to be busy and would not disturb them. However, a lot of companies want their agents to be focused on the customers. So if a user has accept multiple calls active and the option enabled in the queue, if a person is on any other type of telephone call, they will be notified for a second call coming in. A big focus has been given to the departments and a lot of power has been given to them. But we will be increasing the functionality and the power of the departments in the future as well. We will be migrating the phone book from a global company phone book to an individual department's phone book as well. We will be able to have multiple CRM configurations on the PBX. Rather than having one global CRM configured, you will be able to have one CRM per department. So if your sales team and your technical support team are using two different types of CRM, that won't be a problem. And the blacklist will also be migrated to the departments as well. Traditionally in 3CX, we only had two user roles, the user and the manager. We then added the receptionist role into the groups as well back then. In version 18, we also added four more security roles, the system owner, the system admin, the group owner, and the group admin. Those have been migrated over to version 20. The group owner now becomes the owner and the group admin will become the department administrator. The user, receptionist and manager roles within the departments in version 18 were customizable. So rather than just giving the default roles, you could customize and tweak a bit. 
In version 20, the user roles are not customizable. So if there is any customization on these three roles, they will be reverted back to the defaults for each role. An example is that a user had default presence rights, but also had the rights to intercom. The additional custom selection will no longer be available for this user. If you want them to perform extra operations, you will need to modify their user role to be something different. In version 18, we had a cutback admin console that could do some configuration, but not everything because we had the management console back then. Now, since everything has been migrated over to the admin console in version 20, we've given it a bit of an overhaul. A lot more cleaner configuration and more information available to the admin. For example, on the users page, we see everything on a single line for each user. We can see which DIDs that have been assigned, which department or even departments, because they can be part of multiple departments. We can see which IP phones they have assigned to them and what integrations they have. We can see if a user has two-factor authentication enabled on their extension. We can see if they are integrated with either Google or Microsoft, and if they are using Teams as well. Depending on the rights that a user has on a department, they will generally be able to see each other's presence within their department. Users with specific roles can also see the calls of others within the department as well. Users with specific roles can also be given rights to other departments as well without being added to them. We can see for an example, our user 104 is part of the administration department. They have the ability to see the presence and the calls within the department. However, we also have the IT department and we have given them the ability to see the presence of that department as well. They will not be able to see the calls because we have not given them that right. Let's move on and talk about our new Windows soft phone. Now we have had a Windows soft phone for quite a few years here at 3CX. And that is a product that users love and enjoy using 3CX with. So we've given it a bit of an overhaul. We've given it a new design to be more aligned with the current 3CX app design, namely the mobile applications. The deployment of this will be through the Microsoft Store, which will allow us to centrally push out new versions, updates, and so on. It is currently in the beta stage and can integrate with Jabra headsets currently. For those of you that are using Mac devices, don't worry, a Mac application will be released very soon as well. With the web client and PWA, when a call comes in, you would receive a browser notification of a call coming in. With the Windows soft phone, it is a proper dialog box. So you can answer, decline, or divert the call to the voicemail directly from the application. This is not just a notification at this point. In a corporate environment, a lot of the users are used to using an IP phone that is sitting on their desk. RPS provisioning has been around for quite a while and it has been used in 3CX as well, namely for provisioning remote devices. We would provision a router phone, for example, through the RPS. We would send the provisioning URL to the RPS server. When a phone boots on the network, it will go and pick up its provisioning URL. It would then go to the PBX and request its configuration file. And then with its settings in place, it will go and register back onto the PBX. We very recently added the capabilities of provisioning local devices as well. All you need to do to configure this is under the user, go to the IP phones and just add the phones, make a model and MAC address. Plug and play provisioning has also been available for local provisioning of IP phones and also through the SBC devices. That's not going away. You can disable the RPS provisioning if you don't want your phone information and data to be sent to a third party. You can keep all your data locally within your network and it is the same procedure to provision a phone locally or through an SBC. You just select it when it comes in through multicast and assign it to a user. On the phones page in version 20, we have streamlined things a bit and now we have a separate button for plug and play phones. In version 20, we have introduced a route point API to make it easier to route calls. One of the neatest features of 3CX is to be able to do complex call routing using an application we have that is called the call flow designer. This allows you to do wizardry with the calls coming in. But a lot of people 
use CFD for very simple tasks, namely for the routing of calls based on the time of the day. We resolved this partially by being able to do the routing of the timing at the destination. We previously saw for the ring groups and the queues that you can do a routing based on in office hours, out of office hours, break times and holidays. So that reduces the necessity for a dedicated CFD project to some extent. Another use of the CFD that is commonly used is to be able to capture the calls and process them based on certain information, namely a caller ID of someone. With the route point API that we have released, you can capture the calls and do the processing based on some C sharp code. So you don't need to have a dedicated CFD project for this. What we do with that, for example, is that we analyze the caller ID and assign a specific agent. For example, if I call into my insurance company, they have my mobile phone registered and they know that this particular customer is assigned to this particular insurance agent. I don't need to select any menus on a digital receptionist, nor do I need to remember someone's extension number. They can do that automatically. Reporting is another aspect that we have been giving focus on in version 20. Given the streamlining of the SIP engine, the database, the database structure, we are able to now provide improved call logging and CDR handling. So we have given a bit of emphasis to the reports as well to provide improved call reports. And the plan in the future is to also create more and even visual reports as well that are more dashboard like and not just a table of data. Another improvement that we have made is to the recording archiving. The archiving of recordings has always been available in 3CX. In version 18, we had the capability of doing an archive on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. In version 20, we have added the capability of doing the archiving immediately, as soon as the call is completed. This is very helpful if you are using a failover scenario where you are utilizing your archive location as the storage, so your secondary server, as and when it needs to take over, gives access to the recordings. The transcription of voicemails and recordings has also been available in 3CX. There have been improvements made. Google will be deprecating their version one of the Google Speech API and moving to version two. Version 20 does utilize Google Speech API version two, and the added improvement that we have added to this as well is that the recordings no longer just transcribe the first minute of the recording, but they can do the entire recording as well. If you do have any transcription configurations already configured, you will need to redo them. Faxing can be a source of a headache for many telephone administrators. Faxing is still alive even in the 21st century. And in 3CX, we have always had the capability of receiving faxes, converting them to PDF, and sending them via email. But those faxes would remain on the server. And you could see the disk size creeping up and expanding as time went on. We have now added the cleanup fax option, which will allow you to remove older faxes. And this will allow for a smaller backup size to make restoring a lot easier. And it also reduces the disk usage on the server. So you are more efficient on the resources as well. Creating a fax extension is also possible in version 20 still. We sincerely hope that 3CX gives you many years of trouble-free operation. However, being in IT, we know that sometimes things do go wrong. So we have given a lot of emphasis in version 20 to the troubleshooting aspect as well, to make the lives of the admins a lot easier. We have given a lot of emphasis to the event log. We started this process all the way back in version 18. In version 20, we have a greatly improved event log, which will give you a lot more relevant information to show you what is going on and what you can do to fix things yourself if things do go wrong. And this will make the reliance on the activity log and Wireshark captures a lot less relevant. The system health section of the dashboard will allow you to see a direct download of the main information, for example, the system info, the networking information of the server, an overview of the processes and the connections to the server. This will reduce the reliance on the support info for basic troubleshooting information. The support info package is still available if you need to go deeper for more complex problems. However, 
This will make it a lot easier just to get the basic information you need. The Wireshark capture will be coming back in version 20 as well, and it will still be there in the dashboard. So if you need to do a more complex network troubleshooting, we have added a database maintenance button, which will allow you to do some housekeeping in the database on a periodical basis. And one of the main troubleshooting steps in IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? We have added a reboot operating system button to the dashboard as well. A game changer in the troubleshooting toolbox of the telephony administrator is the VoIP quality monitor. One of the most difficult things to troubleshoot in IT is an intermittent problem that cannot be replicated on demand. A user might be telling you that they've had a problem making and receiving calls all morning. But as soon as you go to their desk and try it out, it just starts working. And that can be very frustrating because there may be an underlying problem that can't be replicated on demand. So what you can do with the VoIP quality monitor is you can trigger a monitoring of an extension for a period of one, three, five, or seven days. The user can even trigger this themselves. You can also do it for an active call. You can right click on an active call and you can troubleshoot the uh, connection quality. This will give you information about which leg of the call is the problem. So for example, if your user is connected onto the PBX making an external call with the provider, the PBX will analyze both the call legs and it will give you information. We can see that there is a very brief call between John Smith and myself, and we can see that we're using the same codec, so there's no transcoding going on uh, between the two legs. And we can see that it is an excellent telephone call it was a very clear call in the local network. So this will allow you to focus your troubleshooting steps in a very particular location. Is it outside the network? Is it in the network? A highly requested feature in 3CX was the ability to do two-factor authentication. We technically have had two-factor authentication when you are utilizing the single sign-on from Microsoft and Google. When you sign on to these platforms, Depending on your account settings, you would need to authenticate through your two-factor authentication mechanism. Now, with version 20, we have enabled two-factor authentication natively on the users. So using either Google's Authenticator or even Microsoft's Authenticator, when you are connected using your extension credentials, whether that is your extension number or your email and your password, the security code will be shown. You open up your Authenticator application, and you go and enter your one-time password. This is fantastic if a user needs to connect from outside the office and they don't want to connect using their Microsoft or Google account because then that would start synchronizing calendars, emails, bookmarks, and so on. So what they can do is they can use their extensions credentials, they can enter their one-time password, do whatever they need to do, and then log out, and the session is over. With the release of version 20, we're not gonna rest on our laurels. You know in 3CX, especially those that have been dealing with 3CX for quite a few years, that we always release new functionalities. So what's coming? With version 20 being a complete overhaul of the entire system, there are a few things that will not make it to the final release. For example, scheduled reports. Reports can currently be configured on an ad hoc basis, but scheduled reports that you need to receive on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis will be able to be done when update one comes out. Also, if you are utilizing hot desking, you will not be able to configure the hot desking until update one comes out. If you do need to have these functionalities, we do urge you to remain on version 18 until the release of update one. Whenever you watch a webinar at 3CX, you are using the 3CX video conferencing platform. So we will be releasing an on-premises video conferencing server as well. A lot of people don't want to have connections outside of their network, and they want to contain everything internally within their own domain. So you maintain complete control of your data and the confidentiality. Coming soon is also the ability to send a group SMS as well. Now, 3CX has SMS capabilities for one-to-one -one sending, but this will now be going to a group level. There will be improvements made to the Teams integration. We will have more information released in a blog post in the very near future. The 3CX free and SMB offerings of 3CX are a multi-instance hosted platform where each SMB system is a department within a larger PBX in the background. 
A self-install multi-instance will be coming soon in the very near future as well. The inbound rules from version 18 have been deprecated. The DID routing is now going towards the destination, as we mentioned earlier on. But one of the functionalities of the inbound rules was the ability to give a name to the DID. So it makes it easy to see which DID was dialed when you answer the call on the screen of your phone. The naming of the DIDs will be coming available as well. The ability to route calls based on caller ID will also be coming. Earlier on, we mentioned the route point API to capture calls and process them based on c -sharp code. We will be releasing more APIs as well. The configuration API, which will allow you to very easily configure your users, settings, and automate these as well. That is going to be coming in the very near future as well. We will also be releasing a client-side API, which will allow you to see real-time information from the system. Namely, you can see the user's statuses. You can see the call status and be able to control and manipulate calls as well. On the roadmap for the future is the enhancement of the wallboard as well. The current 3CX wallboard is a bit static. So we will be giving the option for more views, making it more configurable and also allowing for an outbound wallboard as well. We will be making changes to the switchboards as well to make lives of receptionists a lot easier with a new receptionist view. This will optimize their core handling for faster handling of calls, namely transfers, because a lot of receptionists receive a lot of calls and they transfer the calls throughout the business. We previously triggered an update to version 20. That has now completed. Let's go log in and see what goodies we have available. Okay, so I've now logged into the admin console of version 20. By going to the dashboard, I can see that the upgrade has been completed successfully. I can see my departments have been transferred over as well. Let's go to the office hours. Previously, we had defined the office department to have office hours. By going to the office hours, we can see that the office hours have been copied over to our departments. So all is good. Now, the sales team can be put under a different time zone if we want to. I will define that under United Kingdom London. I can see my users have their departments set. Whoever is in the office, everyone is in the uh, default office department. And we have the two users that are part of sales. Now, previously we did mention that the system owner should have a unique email address. We can see that that is the case, but we can see two users who are using the same email address and they are flagged as duplicates. It is recommended that you go and add each user with a unique email address. I'll just go and modify the department administrator. So now all of my users are using a unique email address. I can see that three of my users have an IP phone assigned to them as well. If I want to enable two-factor authentication on a user, I can just do that very, very easily, just like that. And we can see that they all have two-factor authentication enabled. If I go into one of my users now, I can disable two-factor authentication for a particular user if I don't want them to use it. Consequently, if you don't want to enable it on everyone, but only for a select few, you can go the other way around and come to this page for each user and enable it. Going to my call handling, I can see that a DID is assigned to my sales queue but I see that they are not assigned a department. So I would need to go and assign a department for them. I'm going to go and assign the doorbell ring group to be under the office. And I also need to put a 3CX talk link name. The sales queue. 
will now have the sales department office hours set to it. And I can do the routing based on the time of the day from here as well. When we're on holiday, I don't want to receive calls and I want to play the office's closed announcement. If I want to, I can record a new prompt. I am using a VM in this point and I don't have audio capabilities, so I do not have the capability of recording a message. But if it was a normal computer from a user's terminal, yes, you would be able to uh, configure one. When we're on break, I will accept anyway. So we're going to ignore the office hours because, for example, the sales team would not close the department at lunchtime. They would go on staggered breaks, so I don't need to shut down the department. However, when the office is closed, let's uh, send it to the voicemail box of the sales queue. And every agent within this department, within this queue, will receive an email with the voicemail as an attachment. Let's go and define a talk link as well. This will basically allow anyone who wants to communicate with us via WebRTC, just through their browser. They don't need to give a telephone call. We can receive a call directly from a user's browser. It would come in through to the system through WebRTC and we'll establish just a normal telephone call for the agents. And there we go. By going into the department group menu for sales, I can assign a DID number if I want to. So rather than having it assigned to the queue directly, I can have this by going to the department and I can send it to other destinations apart from the queue if I want to as well. So this is the destination routing that we are talking about. Under the office hours, our sales team does also observe New Year's Day as the holiday as well. And I can add other holidays for this department as well. These will only apply for the sales department, not the office department. On our phones page, we can see which devices are provisioned to the users. If we click on plug and play phones, we can see any multicast requests that have been sent by devices, and we can assign them to users if we need to as well. The outbound rules have been migrated over as well. And we can do any modification we need to. The concept of the outbound rules hasn't changed. So we still have prefixes. We still have calls from extensions and we have number lengths as well, as well as the departments. In the dashboard, we have our event log so we can see everything that has been happening across the system. In my panel, I can see an active call. Now, if I want to troubleshoot this, I can right click on that and I have the capability of monitoring the connection quality. Okay, so this call is now being monitored for quality assurance. And once it is finished, we will be able to see the statistics of this particular call. As an admin, I can also trigger the monitoring of the connection quality from the user's panel as well. I'd like to do that for a period of one week. So now any telephone calls going to and from Sam Smith will be monitored for quality assurance. So we can do any troubleshooting if needed. As a user myself, I can also monitor my connection quality as well from here. Here in the event log of the admin console, we can see a call monitor entry showing the results of a call that has been monitored. All you need to do is just click on it and see the results. This is also visible in the reports under call log. By going to the call log, you will see the little icon on the right hand side, which will show you the connection report. So there we have it. Thank you very much for joining us in this video. Uh, we hope you enjoy version 20. And we look forward to seeing you again in our webinars as well. Look at our website for more details. Thank you very much.